Welcome to another video in which I want to clarify some misconceptions and talk about the 5 essential things you should keep in mind when starting as a white mage or when you are already suffering. And don't worry, we all sucked at certain jobs or still do so like I do in melee jobs for example, but that is the natural process of learning and getting better. So watch as you go from this to this. And if you never heard this sentence before, make sure to also check out Wesk Alva, who produces the best beginner guides and talks about all skills and abilities from level 1 to level 90, so definitely check out his videos. But without further ado, let us start into white magic. First and foremost, to repent for the sins of my previous guide, don't use Cure 1 or simply Cure when you have already reached level 30 and have become a white mage. Cure 2, while being much more expensive, is simply the better option still, because if immediate target healing is required, you don't want to use the weaker Cure 1, hoping for procs and grass to grow, but instead you want to make this single target power healing sequence as short as possible, because spamming heals over a long period will burn your MP in no time and should be avoided. So, if there is need for emergency healing on a tank and you have no other option like your lily heals or you can squeeze in benediction without needing it for certain tank buster mechanics, use cure 2 and forget about cure 1, once you have reached level 30 or higher of course. Secondly, and another white mage essential, use holy, glare and dire, or their low level version stone and arrow. It is no controversy and no opinion, dealing damage as healer is required and desired by Square Enix. And before any newcomer might be misguided by you don't pay my sub dickheads, let me give you one example. The boss, even at the highest difficulty level, will throw in a raid wide attack, as well as some tank auto hit damage, where both of the two healers use one powerful spell or ability to instantly heal up that damage, while maybe applying a region effect on the tank while doing so. Chances are insanely high that it will take at least 15 seconds for the next raid wide attack to happen, and tank busters are not thrown into the mix as well. So you have 15 seconds now, all players are 100% HP and except you're really into role playing and want to show off your best Mikoti posing, while the great cataclysm is faithfully being recreated, hell, you should use that time to reduce the boss's HP with your party together, don't you? But what about preparing heals for the next incoming damage? No. Just no. I mean even with Miko posing, this won't take you more than 3 seconds, right? So please just use your damaging spells in that moment. Which basically means, keep Dia or Arrow active on as many targets as possible while spamming Glare or Stone. Even if your party's HP drops below 80%, keep spamming Glare. Except maybe a fatal party kill attack really is just around the corner. But there you still have a heal buddy around, with whom you should always communicate about big attacks happening and especially when tank busters are in question, due to how useful Benediction is to help Dark Knights to survive their own misery of just existing. And before coming to the second point, while it's also a meme or camera killer for streamers, Holy or Holy 3 is one if not the best attack a healer has access to and you should at least use it to grant your tank time to put on some mitigation before the real action starts. Yes, all this because Holy stuns your enemies, not once, not two times, but three times. With a reduced duration of course, but these are 8 seconds of no incoming damage at least, so for dungeons Go holy or go home, except you're below level 45 of course. Alright, let us talk about the lily system. While being in a weird spot in Endwalker, it is still one if not the most crucial mechanic of the white mage, so managing and utilizing the lily system's potential is mandatory to become a good and god-fearing healer, because without fear of our god Yoshi P, you will not harness the fruits of job changes in their future patches. So be fearful my dear conjurer. However, let us take a closer look to the basic idea behind the lily system. You gain one stack each 30 seconds you find yourself in combat, that you can then use to cast powerful lily spells, a group and a single target heal. When using these three times before changing jobs or switching the zone, a Flatus Misery can be used, which is a super powerful spell causing an insane amount of damage to the target and targets around it. That means use this when ready or if you know there are multiple enemies coming together very soon, wait a short moment and get the full benefit of AoE devastation. Still, the most important aspect of these lily spells is that they are free of MP costs and instant so you can perfectly use them for any form of movement or when God Yoshida turns them into OGCDs, they are a powerful tool to use in between fulfilling your job as Glare Mage. 
So if at any point movement is just around the corner or you need space for weaving in OGCDs, use those Lily spells, especially to favor them over Cure 2 or Medica 2 when just the healing is needed, which can be boosted even further by using Plenary Indulgence just before using the AoE Lily Heal Aflatus Rapture. My personal tip here, use Glare another time to grant space for weaving in Plenary Indulgence and then use Aflatus Rapture to power heal your party. Next up, a size is a DPS first and healing second ability. No, you should not keep it for anything longer than 10 seconds at max, just to gain benefits of both its healing and its damaging value. Because a size also recovers 5% of your MP, which is a really powerful tool to sustain your MP pool on a decent level. Yes, our creator could possibly increase this MP gain a bit, but it is what it is, except you're watching this video in patch 6.66 maybe. Nonetheless, being a powerful DPS advantage, especially in multi-target scenarios, keep it on cooldown as best as possible, because you only have to wait 45 seconds to use it another time. But of course, the satisfaction is real if you can accomplish to utilize both aspects, healing and damage of a size, and go home with a smile brighter than your holy animation. Um, just kidding, nothing is brighter. Okay, last but not least, be aggressive, my friend. Didn't I mention that in the first point? Yes and no. Yes, because spamming glare is our passion, our dream, and our medicine. Because it offers space to weave in all the good things like divine banishing, or shielding up tanks or individual party members falling in love with AoEs very frequently, or tetragrammaton that is being used when you fail to use divine banishing properly and even the almighty benediction to release dark knights from their insufferable pain when using it too soon. Um, that mention, never use benediction when the walking dead effect hasn't procced yet. Living dead, reddish icon. Walking dead, grayish icon. Use banner when you see the grayish icon. And if your dark knight wants to soak a tank buster mechanic with it, wait a slight bit until the big waves of tank buster damage have ceased and then use banner. But back to the topic, playing aggressively grants multiple benefits, <laughs> sorry, because on top of granting space for OGCDs to be weaved in, which are your most effective heals so far, it does reduce the dinner and dating time with enemies significantly, and sometimes you're just not in the mood for being invited to a romantic dinner, so help your party to end it as quickly as possible. On top of that, Liturgy of the Bell, at least how it's designed at the moment, rewards you for being offensive, because every time you receive damage, its healing effect is being procced and its value is increased by healing your whole party in the same moment. And while I really cannot emphasize nor recommend to get Enmity as a healer, with this new level 90 ability it's not too harmful if you do. Which of course also does count for raids, so if you have any chance to receive damage without farming Vuln stacks, go for it, and place the Lily Bell before doing so, especially combined with raid-wide damage hitting you and your party at that moment. But of course, if at any point they change how the Lily Bell is being triggered, which I pray they do, forget taking hits by yourself and let others take them, like your typical black mage inviting some AoEs or cleave attacks for romantic dinners. But I guess we can agree that these two are indeed a lovely couple. Okay guys, if you stick to these essentials and maybe watch a comprehensive guide of Wesk or myself on top of this, you should be well prepared to at least kill one or the other Dark Knight, or even Gunbreakers. So go out there, have some fun, and smash as many edgy Darkness players as you possibly can. Until next time, check out my White Mage Beginner's Guide in the description, or maybe swap over to the other side of the coin and check out my Dark Knight Guide to know more about the insufferable pain I mentioned. But it sucks. Whatever you decide to do, stay safe, stay healthy, and blood for the bloodline.